We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And now New Galaxy Broadcasting presents Inalienable and Free, Voice of the Coalition a program addressing the grave challenges to human and citizen rights in America and the rest of the world. How can we, the people of Earth, take back the power and privileges granted to us by God and address so significantly in the Declaration of Independence? Our rights are inalienable, that is, given by God and incapable of being taken away from or given by another. These rights are the basis of liberty, the foundation of all life and happiness. The Coalition of Planetary Empowerment is an organization designed to give its members tools and information to empower them personally, in relationships, and in business and employment, but also to give them a voice and the ability to help transform political and corporate governance to support the true needs and desires of people throughout the world. Inalienable and Free focuses on the need for government and corporate business interests to be responsive to the will and desire of their constituents and consumer shareholders. My name is Johnny Blue Star, and this is Inalienable and Free, Voice of the Coalition. I'm joined by my co-host, Dr. Hugo Rodier, an integrated physician who has always had a wide interest in philosophy, science, literature, ancient spirituality, and hermetics, but now has, is, uh, has developed an interest in a kind of planetary medicine that is helping diagnose and propose solutions for a planet suffering from severe misalignment from any real form of planetary wellness. I guess we know this because of what happened last night, which was the airstrikes in Syria. Not really the healthiest thing for the planet, I think, but we will discuss that. Uh, incidentally, this is a uh, call-in show. If you want to talk to us, dial 1-88-439-5471. That's 1-88-439-5471. In fact, this... Uh, Coalition for Planetary Wellness is an organization we're developing that will assist in empowering members in their personal issues, relationships, and business, but also truly empowering them to address political and corporate malfeasance collectively, creatively, and through the power of intelligent participation in electoral pol pol politics and corporate governance as consumers and shareholders. So, you go. What kind of uh, what, what kind of response did you have to last night? Well, um, uh, lots of responses, uh, uh, emotional, intellectual, but um, I would I would rather hear from you, see how you uh, are interpreting all this before I open my mouth. <laughs> well, I was going to say, you know, that uh, this show we're calling "Threats to the Presidency" and "Threats to Peace" is. Highlighting a week full of chaotic and unexpected and potential lethal, potentially lethal craziness brought on by various forms of decisions, behavior, and legal enforcement activities that threaten the president and even the tenuous, fragmented, current fragility of world stability and peace. And I guess, you know, the capstone of the week was the attack on Syria's alleged chemical warfare infrastructure by the U.S., France, and England. So uh, I, 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 the way I re reacted to it was uh, not very good. I had hoped that this would never happen, even to the last minute. And um, so I'm going to discuss a few of the things that have occurred to me, and, and I'm going to ask you to give your opinion on them. First of all, Secretary Mattis, uh, when he announced the attack, he said the attacks were ordered by the president under Article 2 of the Constitution, which al allows them to, quote, use military force overseas to, def to defend important national interests. And he actually said, we and our allies find these atrocities inexcusable. As our commander in chief, the president has the authority under Article 2 of the Constitution to use military force overseas to defend important United States national interests. United States has vital national interests in averting a worsening catastrophe in Syria and specifically deterring the use of proliferation of 
uh, chemical weapons. Here's the problem. And this was from a New York Times um, interview. Uh, in the, it is true that in the modern era, executive branch lawyers have argued that the president as commander in chief may use military force unilaterally if he decides a strike would be in the national interest, at least when it's, it's in anticipated nature, scope and duration fall short of a, quote, real big war. But in terms of Article 2, Mattis, like the others, is broadly interpreting Article 2, which does not specifically say any such thing as affirming the president's right to use, quote, military force overseas to defend national interests. This is what it says when it talks about the commander-in-chief clause. You go, it says in Article 2, Section 2 of the U.S. Constitution, the president shall be commander-in-chief of the Army and Navy in the United States and of the militia of the several states when called into the actual service of the United States. Does that really sound like a specific uh, ability to go ahead and, and attack certain things in the national interest at all? What do you think? No, in fact, uh, Trump came campaign saying that Obama was wrong in in uh, uh, attacking Libya without consulting uh, Congress. So he's doing he the same. He said that, he specifically said that. That's right. Yeah. So he's going against his own rhetoric, campaign rhetoric. Of course, they all do. Um, but yeah, you're absolutely right. Um, no, this is against Congress and the Constitution. I thought it's, I think it's amazing. I, I do think they mostly go against what they say, but this, but President Trump has a history now of this, doing amazing reversals. Um, well, well, to be fair, they all do. And that's one of the reasons I have a very dim view of what's going on on both sides. Uh, I think yes. both sides are gripped by a overdose of testosterone, materialism, and lack of wisdom. And we are talking about the, the establishment Democrats and Republicans, correct? And the Russians. I mean, oh, and the Russians. Okay, well, that's good. I, I think they should be thrown in because they're not exactly the most innocent party in the world either. But let's, no. just, talk, let's just talk about this a little bit further, about chemical... We, 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 you know, Obama said that uh, chemical warfare is an atrocity, okay? And I think of... Oh, it's an atrocity. Oh, yeah, I agree. But what happens about nuclear weapons, which kind of wipe out millions of people once and destroy the planet Earth? Or how about bombs that just destroy or cripple the human body in so many ways and blow off limbs, hurt people for life with the internal damages? Is that any less horrible than chemical weapons? I'm sorry. I don't know if it is really. I don't know how to compare them. If national interest extends to this, then it could extend to all kinds of weapons and practices. So uh, why are we picking out chemical weapons? I because, mean, and, and yeah, go ahead. Because there's something going on that we don't know about. And I think the drums of war are be beating again because someone somewhere will profit from it. And so I, you're absolutely right. Whether I kill you with one shot or a machine gun or a knife or a hammer, you're dead anyway. So it seems like an excuse, an excuse, right? Exactly. There's an excuse going on that I think will become clear when somebody writes a book in 10, 20 years, like the pattern we see in history. But you know, this whole chemical thing, number one, Mattis last night could not tell you specifically what was used. And he backed yes. off and he ho-hummed around. It turns out that we, they've used chlorine dozens and dozens of times for decades. Uh, number two, uh, as a little kid, uh, a chlorine truck spilled downtown close to where I lived, and I thought I was going to die. And it, it was very hard to breathe. I mean, it was just panic. Accidents happen. Now, I'm not saying what happened a week ago was an accident or intentional. What I'm saying is that uh, we don't know. We don't know, and we go off... Uh, of course, Mr. Trump painted himself in a corner uh, by throwing rockets, l launching rockets a year ago. So uh, there was very little doubt that he was going to strike again and harder. Well, you know, let's to go back to this, uh, the, the, the chemical warfare thing, because this is very interesting, because I did a little research on it. And um, 
it, it wasn't a sa uh, they weren't claiming sarin gas like you said they were claiming chlorine gas now uh secretary of state tillerson criticized syria for the use of chlorine gas in the rebel held eastern ghouta region near damascus earlier this year but state departments later told reporters it did not constitute a red line quote this is from Tom, tobias schneider uh, even though officials have been loath to admit it, the prohibition against chemical weapons use in Syria has in the past been understood to only pertain to highly lethal nerve agents such as sarin, but not easily produced and far less, de and far less deadly chlorine. That's what he told the national, uh, he's an independent analyst tracking re reported chlorine attacks. Do we know what was used in Duma? Well, we one of them, one of the medical workers who claimed to have seen it, and other people have said there's nothing there anyway, said we believe the gas used was chlorine and another kind of gas, but he's never seen the symptoms like twitching of normal pupils and foaming at the mouth, and so he, so he, you know, he's thinking there's something beyond chlorine, but it wasn't sarin. So the thing is. Oh, well, now we're concerned about the red line between dying by chlorine and sarin. And, uh, and you know, of course, it wasn't mentioned before. And, and, and our own state officials have denied that it's, uh, it's part of the red line. Isn't that curious? Well, there, there's something going on. And they're just grasping at straws, you know, to come up with a reason to, to take out their new toys. Yeah, because taking out on, on something that's been done hundreds of times. Right. Exactly. Now, look, yeah, it's, it's, watching watching the news, the generals kept talking about precision, 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 precision. I get it. Okay, your toys worked, and I'm happy for you. I'm happy for everyone, really, because if we're going to strike, let's minimize civilian civilian casualties. But the whole thing reminded me of the cops that came over to look for my boy when he was. Uh, supposed to run, be running around w with a gun trying to kill himself. And so the whole park down below my house was full of cops and helicopters and dogs. and Really? Yes. Wow. The cop in charge, the, co the sergeant in charge was so, so happy, couldn't hide his excitement of playing with all the toys as his command. They found the body, his first reaction was to put all the toys away, wouldn't even come over to tell me. I knew he'd found the body because I could see the helicopter hovering by the, the, over the body. He puts all the toys away, minutes go by, and then he goes and runs to his detective in charge, just, just re rejoicing in how cool it was that the dogs had found the body. And here I am standing, watching all this, and so, as you can tell, I'm very upset about this, but the, the whole thing struck me as these generals so happy that their toys worked well, precision, precision, precision. Well, I'm happy for you. But what about the uh, spiritual component, the relationships and all that, uh, uh, you know, the, the higher view of the world? No, they don't care. So... I, and look, I'm not just bashing on the U.S. I well, that's why Russian. we have a that's Thanks. why we have a civilian in charge of the armed forces, right? And then we have a we have a Congress in charge of the civilian who's in charge of the armed forces. Exactly, because that mentality has existed for a long, long time amongst you know people, not always, but you know who are in power in the military because they are set on certain objectives. Let me just remind everybody that they can call in at 1-888-439-5471. That's 1-888-439-5471. And, you know, we're going to take a break, and maybe people will be uh, relieved for a second. Uh, and we're going to be talking about um, adapting novels to the screenplay. That's something that I do, and uh, a song. Uh, which I think is important for to keep up our spirits. So that let's uh, play them now. That's uh, C4 and M3. This is Johnny Blue Star, CEO of New Galaxy Enterprises, a media content development company. 
If you are an author and want your novel adapted to the screen or to the new high-quality TV series developed by Amazon, Hulu, and Netflix, for example, I probably can help. My company, New Galaxy Enterprises, is a media content company, and I've worked on a number of adaptations, including a dramatic version of ventriloquist Paul Winchell's autobiography, an adaptation of a novel co-authored by myself and a Korean War veteran, an historical account of the Mexican art revolution, a science fiction screenplay based on a fictional novel account of Fallen Angels, and many other proprietary and client-based projects. We want our projects to be with high-quality potential and positive intent. To learn more about New Galaxy, see samples of our work, or talk to us about your project, please go to www.NewGalaxyEnterprises.com and fill out the contact form. that uh, I wrote that song with a Russian composer, Edgar Ahrens. Uh, this was long before the, the newest level of friction became possible between our countries, but I hope, you know, I think we were still friends. And uh, he actually introduced me to someone he wanted to work with named Patricia Welch, who's that fant- whose voice you just heard, whose fantastic voice has, uh, has assisted us in a number of songs. And... Um, she actually was introduced to me. she introduced um, was introduced to me by Edgar because he was in contact with her and she turned out to live about thirty miles away from me and so we recorded our first uh, song uh, in a studio and I was there it was really wonderful to experience it anyway that was love never withers uh, now getting back to the more unpleasant aspects of things you go. Uh, I want to go into this this part, which we've mentioned before, that, um, you know, when, when we were talking about the national interest concept of where applicable should only extend to areas where Americans are attacked, held hostages. I think that's a legitimate, uh, if there's an emergency like that, but this isn't anything like that. Even so, others believe that uh, there should be a war, pa- we should practice the War Powers Act, which apparently most presidents don't particularly believe in because of its constitutional fragility. It has certain restrictions. You have to tell Congress first, and you have only a certain amount of days that you can go on with this. Enough days to destroy the world, incidentally, but anyway. But one of the people who uh, who doesn't really like either of those, or at least specifically does not like the, uh, the idea of a president just having, being able to unleash war when he wants, is Rand Paul who brings this up as an issue when he recently spoke to Mike Pompeo, former head of the CIA, an essential war head, excuse me, essential war hawk, 
who lightened his rhetorical presence when seeking an affirmation of Trump's nomination for Secretary of State. Let's listen to this exchange. It's really interesting and appropriate. That's N6. N8, excuse me. N8 ran questions Pompeo. Enterprise and your willingness to serve the country. Um, you t discussed with Senator Kane a little bit about whether or not the president has the authority to bomb Assad's forces or installations in Syria. And you mentioned historically, well, we've done it in the past. I don't think that's a complete enough answer. I mean, my question would be, do you think it's constitutional? Does the president have the constitutional authority to bomb Assad's forces? Does he have the authority, absent congressional action, to bomb Assad's forces or installations? Senator, as I, I think I said to Senator Kane, I'm, I'm happy to repeat my, my view on this. Uh, those decisions are waiting every place we can. We should work alongside Congress to get that. But yes, I believe the president has the domestic authority to do that. I don't think, I don't think that has been disputed by Republicans or Democrats throughout an extended period of time. Actually, it's disputed mostly by our founding fathers who believe they gave that authority to Congress. And actually, they're uniformly opposed to the uh, executive branch having that power. In fact, Madison wrote very specifically, he said, the executive branch is the branch most prone to war. Therefore, we have, with studied care, vested that authority in the legislature. So the fact that we have in the past done this doesn't make it constitutional. And I would say that I take objection to the idea that the president can go to war when he wants, where he wants. We were talking about how there were two justifications for uh, for uh, using force against another country on, on another country's soil by the, by uh, the United Nations Charter. One is that uh, we have permission of the Security Council. The second is that it actually is a matter of defense. And but the Defense Department justified as intended to deter deter the regime from using chemical weapons again. That's not self defense. Sorry, I mean, that wasn't going to happen, but even so, look at this. In this meeting, there's a coming meeting, to, I think today, of, uh, tonight, of the Security Council, not tonight, today. I, isn't it a little bit late? There, Russia called a meeting to discuss the attack, and they're going to have the meeting. But the, it, what, but the, the attack... Wasn't it a clear violation of the UN Charter? Yeah, there, there had been a Russian veto over a specific independent investigation of the attack. But there was also a proposal for another type of investigation that the Russians wanted. I don't know what were they, you know, I think you go that uh, the Russians didn't trust exactly what was happening as an explanation. Well, you know? there's... There's something going on here. You know, it just doesn't make sense. Nighty, what you brought up doesn't make sense. And the other thing that doesn't make sense is like a week ago, maybe two weeks ago, uh, Mr. Trump announced that we're getting out of Syria. Okay. Uh, yes, right. It, it, seems, it seems like great. Now the Russians and the Syrians can do anything they want, right? And so why? what's the incentive here to gas a bunch of people – when Trump just said, I'm getting out of here. And so why would you turn around and give him an excuse to backtrack and come back? I mean, it just it just doesn't make sense. Well, you know, one of the things that one of the things I want to mention is that, uh, you know, Haley and other people are saying, uh, well, they vetoed our an investigation. Well, they didn't just veto it. They had another alternative, which people didn't, decided they didn't even want to bring up. Uh, and I think they have a right to maybe be a little skeptical. Let's hear something uh, from the Liberty Report with Ron Paul, Rand Paul's father, and Daniel McAdams' his co-host, and, and what they said about the possibility of the Syrian chemical attack being somewhat other than it, exp than it appears. So we're going to play N9, false flag in Syria. And I think what's going on here is the United States and the anti-Assad people have lost the war. And they're, they're very, very desperate. So they're st striking out to stir up this, uh, this trouble. And uh, so uh, that fell through. So they had to have another gas attack. I imagine that's about the third or fourth time they've used gas as the issue because that's the red line. Oh, if he uses gas against his own people. So the argument is the way the, the, way the people that perpetuate these false flags is that uh, Assad is gassing his own people. At the same time, he's winning the war and the people are flocking back in 
to go to the territories that he has uh, returned to the government of Syria. But ne nevertheless, uh, he's out there gassing his own people, which makes no sense whatsoever. And s fewer and fewer people are, are believing this. But unfortunately, uh, uh, the people who control our bombs and our weapons and our allies, uh, you know, go along with it. Well, anyway, they had to come up with something new. So it's another another gas attack in East, uh, East Bhutan, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, pictures and all and white helmets and they explained it. Oh, Assad's killing his own people again. Enough where, uh, whether it was connected or not, I don't know, but then there was the incident over the weekend uh, where it looks like uh, uh, the Israelis bombed up near Homs, uh, homes, I guess. And uh, and it, but it turns out that that's about their hundredth mission up there. But anyway, it's all is connected there. And uh, now, of course, we've just uh, sort of have already started to recover from bringing the troops home. That lasted for three five or minutes. four days, <laughs> five minutes. Right. So uh, here it is. Um, it looks like uh, the, the the bosses, the uh, deep state, had different ideas, and we have no idea what the true motivations were of, of Donald Trump. Was he serious yeah. or is this a ploy or what's going on? But anyway, it's irrelevant because now we got to go get him. And, and Trump's using so, uh, not, not soft words anymore. He says, these guys are going to pay. So where do you think we stand on this? Uh, when do you think our troops are coming home? <laughs> well, I think it was uh, a Pat Lang, our old friend who runs Six Semper Tyrannus, who said, why doesn't Trump simply pick up his phone and talk to the person who's on watch at the CIA or NSA and ask them, do you have any evidence that this happened? Rather than he, sitting there watching TV and the neocons, it's a constant stream of neocons on TV playing it as a gospel. But we don't know anything about the attack. The only word, as you suggested earlier, the only thing we have is a report from the White Helmets. And of course, they're portrayed in the U.S. as the good guys. But people need to understand this. They were founded by James uh, Le Missourier, who was a MI6 officer, a British intelligence officer with USAID money, $23 million they started with USAID money. It's now funded by the, primarily the U.S. and U.K. governments. Uh, their website is run by a, we a rebel or a, a affiliated PR company, the Syria Campaign. They are clearly in the camp of we must overthrow Assad. And so here they come out once again for the third major time saying chemical attack, chemical attack. And nobody questions two things. Uh, is there any evidence? A. And B. Why would Assad, on the verge of victory, suddenly decide, you know, things are going too well for me. I'm about to win this war. I better release some gas just to make everyone hate me and want to invade me. You know, it's just it's it's so preposterous. Well, you know, I, I do think it's a little ridiculous, isn't it? You go, I mean, it's it's as bad the timing as when uh, this so-called uh, English spy was and his daughter were poisoned at a time when there was a lot of trouble with Russia, a lot of claims against Russia. And now, uh, oh, let's just go ahead and poison the spy. And uh so a lot of people, there is a lot of information and claims that 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 was not really from the Russia at all and that they know it by now. I don't know for sure. Uh, I, I would need to get more into it to be able to find out. But this also the Syrian adventure in uh, 2017 you know, when we attacked, there's been a claim that uh, that we really know officially know that there wasn't any. Uh, sarin gas use, but again, I don't know that. Here is a uh, a clip by Tucker Carlson, who's uh, very conservative, but he was actually lauded by his generally ideological adversaries, Ron Paul, who we heard from, and Daniel McAdams, for his lucid warning about the proposed new Syrian adventure. So we'll take a listen to Tucker Carlson on war and seven. Good evening and welcome to Tucker Carlson tonight. Leaders on both sides of the aisle in Congress, in the media, in our intelligence services, in virtually every overfunded think tank in Washington, have suddenly aligned tonight on a single point of agreement. America must go to war in Syria immediately. Bashar al-Assad cannot continue to lead that country. He must be overthrown. Assad is an evil man, they tell us. His latest crime is a chlorine gas attack carried out over the weekend by his forces against a rebel-held suburb of Damascus. 
Assad's poison gas suffocated children. Pictures of the aftermath of that are all over the Internet, and they are horrifying. Assad is a monster. That's the official story. Almost everyone in power claims to believe it. The push to war in Syria, by the way, has united politicians from both sides. Lindsey Graham and Howard Dean typically agree on very little. Not much at all. But today they are both calling for war in Syria. Graham is demanding massive attacks on the Syrian military. Dean is going even further than that. On Twitter, he called the president, quote, a wimp for merely sending thousands of troops and launching tons of bombs at Syria. That's not enough for Howard Dean, who, as you may remember, once ran for president as the peace candidate. Tonight, he wants total war in Syria. Television pundits, of course, strongly agree. This morning, the foreign policy team over on MSNBC explained that it's far more important for American troops to fight in Syria than it is to secure our own border here in America. Watch. There's no question that now, uh, all these years later, it is Donald Trump's, Donald Trump's challenge. He has to take action. He's right. spoken to Macron. What he ought to do is a coordinated action. There has to be a comprehensive response. As Trump leaves to fight his imaginary border war, he's leaving the real war where we can make a difference and said he's turning it over to Assad and to Iran and to ISIS. This is something that Barack Obama uh, wouldn't even do if, if confronted with these set of facts. Trump has to take action in Syria, everyone nods sagely. That ought to make you nervous. Universal bipartisan agreement on anything is usually the first sign that something deeply unwise is about to happen, if only because there is nobody left to ask skeptical questions. And we should be skeptical of this, starting with the poison gas attack itself. All the geniuses tell us that Assad killed those children. But do they really know that? Of course they don't really know that. They're making it up. They have no real idea what happened. Actually, both sides in the Syrian civil war possess chemical weapons. How would it benefit Assad using chlorine gas last weekend? Well, it wouldn't. Assad's forces have been winning the war in Syria. The administration just announced its plans to pull American troops out of Syria, having vanquished ISIS. That's good news for Assad. And about the only thing he could do to reverse it and to hurt himself would be to use poison gas against children. Well, he did it anyway, they tell us. He's that evil. Please. Keep in mind, this is the same story they told us last April. Do you remember that? It was almost exactly a year ago. The new administration announced it was no longer seeking to depose Assad from power. Regime change was no longer our policy. So the usual war chorus in Washington started yelping, went berserk. And days later, Assad supposedly used sarin gas against civilians in Syria. There was video. We bombed a Syrian airbase in response to that. At the time, this show asked what seemed like the obvious question, are we really sure that Assad did that? It seems weirdly timed and counterproductive to him. Shut up, they explained. Of course we're sure. What an unpatriotic question. But of course they were lying. Two months ago, the Secretary of Defense admitted that actually we still have no proof that Assad used sarin gas last year. The story, it turns out, was propaganda. It was designed to manipulate Americans, just like so much of what they say. We've seen this movie before, and we know how it ends. Well, I'll tell you what. For, for the listeners who might share either that level of skepticism or feel very good about things, about the Syrian airstrike, call us at 1-888-439-5471. That's one 1- 888-439-5471. Well, uh, Hugo, <laughs> now he says that uh, the Secretary of Defense actually says there was no real 2017 proof. Uh, I just find it really strange what's happening. But and there's another one other point, Hugo, that I heard, I heard a Syrian who was broadcasting while this was happening. And he said something that I've heard many times and that it isn't usually brought up, and that there there is not really a revolution going on of the Syrian people against Assad. I'm not sure if this is true, but that what, what is going on is that the Assad was trying to get the terrorists. And so uh, there's bringing that, oh, they're also horribly affected by Assad might not be exactly true, whether they're right or wrong in, in uh, supporting him. What do you think? In war or the beginning of war, the uh, preface to war, 
The first casualty is truth. And, you know, we, we just forget very basic lessons that we should uh, learn in kindergarten or Star Trek. Know thyself, know thy enemy. Do we know ourselves? Who are we? We are an empire that needs an enemy. We'll do anything to have an enemy. So if Mr. Trump says, hey, let's get out of Syria, of course something's going to come up so that we can go back to Syria because we cannot afford, we cannot live without an enemy. And so let's just keep demonizing Syria and the evil monster dictator and Saddam Hussein and all these people because we need to be beating the drums of war all the time. And, and you know, is this preparatory to a big war? Maybe. Is this guy falling? Maybe. This could, this could lead to a big war, couldn't it? I mean, it could, absolutely. attacking it could. the Russian assets and Russian right. people well, in Syria? Sure, this is, this is as foolish as flirting with your boss's wife. You know, you just don't do that. <laughs> now, is it, is it really bad? I don't think so. I, you know, from the beginning, I just thought that this was a storm in a teacup. Uh, we, we've seen it with Korea. The whole thing about North Korea. Remember I told you nothing's going to come of it? Of course, you know, let's not count the chickens yet. Something could happen. Uh, but the, fire like, and fury, the fire and fury did not happen. Exactly. Uh, so all of a sudden, it's, uh, it's, it's not on TV anymore. It's not uh, leading the news anymore because we've moved on to some other enemy. And so, you know, it's just like 2012. You know, we have to live in a constant state of urgency, anxiety. And this is part of what the establishment wants to do to keep people off balance, to keep people uh, uh, nervous, to keep people depending on the government. Hey, we'll take care of you. And, and so, you know, we hear this on coast to coast all the time. These guys get on and this guy's falling, this guy's falling. Look. Johnny, if the sky's if the sky is falling, I hope it lands on my head because I'm tired of all this. Well, uh, I will say that uh, that coast to coast has presented uh, dozens of ways the sky will fall. Exactly. Almost every you know, it used to be it seemed to be almost every other program. I even wrote a little bit of a song about it because it was so it was so funny. But at any rate, uh, and and that's one reason I wanted an alternative. To, I, I mean, originally, I, I still am. I, I, I do appreciate Coast to Coast a lot, but I also yeah, feel it's not sending any specific message. It does. It is critical about some things, but I think we need to talk for a second about alternatives. You go, you know, we are an empire. The United States is an empire, but I and you are not part of that imperial, imperialistic ambition, right? Absolutely we're, we're looking not. for another. We want to see another world. Exactly. So one of the one of the things we're doing is we're creating a coalition of people who have spiritual interests to try and actually seriously go back to one of the most spiritual documents ever created, uh, although it had to be modified, was the Constitution and also the Declaration. We are trying to get back to the actual spiritual foundations of these things, which, as you know, were partially developed by people involved in masonry the good masonry, not the masonry that's paraded around by some of the people who are inverting its intentions. Um, so, so we're trying to get back to those roots, those spiritual roots, and get people to actually learn how to participate in the electoral process, how they can actually find people to be involved in, in uh, political campaigns and primaries and, and, and move them up to the general election with hundreds of people supporting them through a sort of a, uh, a social network that will allow them to create initiatives, support people, and uh, do all kinds of things that would lead to a better electoral process. Uh, in light of what's happened, it's valuable to look over the events of the last few days because we need to see, we don't want to forget this time. We don't want to forget what really led to all this and how the different steps, the strange steps. It is valuable to look over these events. You may remember a recent Trump promise, like you brought up. Uh, you go to uh, to um, uh, you know to get out of Syria, and then he made another promise to make Syria, Russia, and Iran pay for this terrible chemical attack in Syria, which it was terrible if it existed. 
Anyway, when the stock market heard that, it bounced up 200 points. Uh, you know, when 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 he slowed down the threat, but then then he's then he said some other things like Russia vows to shoot down any and all missiles fired at Syria. Get ready, Russia, because they will be coming nice and new and smart. You shouldn't be partners with a gas killing animal who kills the people and enjoys it. Uh, then, uh, you know, that that got people really worried. The stock market fell down. But then then uh, he said something else. He said, never said when an attack on Syria would take place, could be very soon or not so soon at all. In any event, the United States under my administration has done a great job of ridding the region of ISIS. Where's our thank you, America? And now, well, when he s- said that, um, things calmed down, the stock, po- stock market went up again, and um, everything was calm. And then I noticed that things got very uncalm on Friday. And um, so the stock market went down again and the price of gold went up. Anyway, um, so what do you think about that, Hugo? It's all about money and uh, who knows what else is going on behind the scenes, you know. Uh, it's just so unfortunate. And I think we, at the, when we come back from, from the break, uh, we had to talk about the blowback, uh, there's going to be some blowback. Uh, Russia is just pondering how to respond, but it's coming. Sure. Yes, I agree. Let's talk about it, but let's take a break now. Let's play um, let's play a, something about a book that I work with Carlos Lopez Avery uh, about fallen angels and something about the mission of, of, of my company, New Galaxy Enterprises, B2 and C2. It is the 15th century. El Tesoro de Cielo, a Spanish treasure ship, sends a scouting expedition to a strange island. Golden statues surrounding them prove the enormity of their find. Suddenly, hordes of ghoulish creatures with scaly green flesh and skeletal wings descend upon them from the sky. What do you think of this, Rufio? These creatures are fragile, Captain. We can take them with our swords. They seem supernatural. Who knows what powers they possess? Fallen angels weakened by their treason. By God, are you saying they're Nephilim, the devil's host? I'm saying whatever they are, we can take them. Do any of you cowards dare join me? Up against sharp knife-like nails and hideous fangs, the men's swords rip into slimy green flesh. Though black blood pours copiously from their half-naked bodies, creatures miraculously persist. Can the crew survive this bloody, cursed battle? Find out more by googling The Thrice Born, a new sci-fi supernatural novel by Carlos Lopez Avery and Johnny Blue Star. Google with the words Carlos Johnny Kendall, The Thrice Born. That's Carlos Johnny Kendall, The Thrice Born. My company, New Galaxy Enterprises, is a California corporation specializing in the creation of media and promotional content. We are focused on original, innovative projects that are good for humanity. These projects could be nonfiction books or novels, fictional screenplays or documentary content, websites and website content, commercial advertising content for print, audio, or video products on the internet, television, or radio, musical scores for advertising, television, or film, video, audio editing, etc. We want to promote products and projects that support the environment, encourage a healthy experience in living, developing, nurturing and useful technology and offering platforms for positive, socially constructive entertainment or informative, transformative media. Our experience in creating a variety of products like this is rather vast and we offer client-based and collaborative products as well as the opportunity of active investors to join us in the creation and promotion of proprietary products, some of which are in latter stages of development. For more information, go to www.newgalaxyenterprises.com Dot com. That's www.newgalaxyenterprises.com. If you're interested in talking to us, just fill out the contact sheet and we will get back with you. Well, Hugo, we were, you were going to bring up some uh, aspects of the blowback that we expect from Moscow. Well, we were told uh, last night and this morning on TV that uh, Russia is going to spin everything and so we shouldn't believe anything the Russians say. <laughs> right, right. Of you course, know, I saw we, that too. <laughs> well, <laughs> this is funny. I mean, this is kindergarten kids talking. Uh, 
Of course, they're going to give you their version of the events, and but to call it all spin. And what are we doing? Are we not spinning everything to our view? I mean, <laughs> it's just laughable. Of course, well, you know, they, yeah, go ahead. Of course, there'll be a response, and we should take it with a grain of salt. But to totally dismiss everything the Russians say is folly. I mean, look, remember we talked about expelling diplomats because of the London supposedly chemical attack on the spies? We did, and got lots of other countries to do the same, and we did it. Okay, With, that's another kindergarten reaction. I'm not going to talk to you. You know, luckily, we know that Macron is talking to Putin right now. And I was so glad to hear that. Not that Macron is a saint. He no, he was, part of the, he was part of this uh, attack on Russia. Exactly, and he's been wanting to bomb uh, Syria for a long time for many other reasons that we won't go into. But at least Macron is talking to Putin. And so That's good. hopefully all this crap that we're going to hear back and forth, back and forth, both sides spinning, both sides spinning the truth. At least we know they're talking at a level where hopefully things are more truthful and more adult. Well, let's let's look at this. The big thing is that the Russians were accused of manipulating our electoral process, and it's so strange now. Uh, we know that the we know that the um, the DNC was manipulating things and stole the uh, election from Bernie Sanders, perhaps. But the person who did more of this than anybody else, well. I won't say him personally, but his campaign did, is Trump. Because Trump got, I think, millions of people through, uh, through um, Cambridge Analytica to use Facebook to develop mind control propaganda. That was, uh, it was ultimately configured so that they would choose categories of people that had certain vulnerabilities and then send them things that worked on their vulnerabilities and could inflame their emotions so they would vote a certain way. I, I, if that isn't as much 1984 stuff and propaganda stuff and, uh, you know, as any other country has ever used, I don't know who it is. And, and the person who did it was Trump. Maybe it wasn't, he didn't know much about it because he might not have, but Steve Bannon was actually a director for Cambridge Analytica before... Uh, he they it, it was incorporated into the Trump campaign and it was used. Well, Johnny, as you know, I'm a amateur student of history, and yeah. since the dawn of mankind, we have been stuffing the ballot box. We have been putting a thumb on the scale. This is what people in power do. We've done it to other countries. Many times, including Russia, we even sent an army over there a hundred years ago, mm -hmm. the Bolshevik Revolution. We had an American army on Russian soil, which we don't advertise. It's all about guns, germs, and steel, a great book mm -hmm. by Jared Diamond. Okay, and this whole thing about germs, hey, most Native Americans were not killed by guns. They were killed by germs. Okay, and so for us to get on the high horse and start preaching, you know, we've been manipulating, influencing our elections ourselves. Remember Kennedy and the mafia? Remember mm -hmm. the Bush elections? Uh, mm -hmm. Florida and all that stuff and the hanging chads? Please. Yeah. You know, it's like this is what kids do. They attack other people, other kids, about the same things they've been doing themselves. So... You know, it just our our society, our government, our our uh, organizations, our corporations are in the hands of people that are materialistic and has no have no clue about emotional and spiritual development. Yeah, well, I'll tell you what. Talking about blowback or strange things, let's hear uh, a little bit about what happened to uh, the pre presidency. Um, recently. Let's play Raid on Michael Cohn in 10. Earlier today, uh, federal agents raided the law offices and other locations related to longtime attorney of President Trump, Michael Cohen. 
uh, it raises the specter that federal authorities are looking far beyond uh, any questions about Mr. Cohen's relationship to the ongoing inquiry to the Russia, uh, Russians' uh, interference in the 2016 election. Cohen has been at the center of a payment to Stormy Daniels, who is alleged to have been in an affair uh, with President Trump. Trump has denied any knowledge uh, of the payment, but the watchdog group Common Cause has uh, requested that the Justice Department open an investigation into that payment as, as perhaps an illegal donation to the, to the Trump campaign. The FBI agent seized a undisclosed uh, number of documents, and it could take uh, weeks before investigators get a look at these documents because they have to be run through a, a team of prosecutors to determine what information remains privileged and what is fair game for investigators to look at. For more information on this story, go to usatoday.com. Well, we're going to, uh, in, a, in a couple of seconds, uh, ask, ask you, you're going to talk about our health, which is a really nice thing to talk about in, in regards to the rest of this program. But I just want to mention that, you know, James Comey, Comey stuff just came out. Uh, we'll talk about this more in another show. His book came out. There's an impending Mueller report. There's threats to pardon Scooter Libby, which is really hilarious, who was involved in uh, in leaking information about uh, uh, a, a flame who was a, a CIA agent. Very good movie, whatever else. And he, and Trump wants to rejoin the Trans-Pacific Partnership, another twist and turning of everything. And now we said all those things that we'll discuss in some other occasion. Let's talk about health. Well, sure, Johnny. Thanks for the time. Um, this week's blog is on uh, the gloved finger. Should you get a rectal exam? Uh, <laughs> ouch. Ouch. Sorry. Well, uh, <laughs> a lot of emotions, a lot of emotions around that exam. Well, right. it's being dropped by a lot of doctors who are keeping up with the medical literature. I quit doing it 10 years ago. It's nothing but tra unnecessary trauma and humiliation to a man. It yields very little information, very little. So check out my blog. You'll see that the U.S. Preventive Task Force has been saying stop the rectal exam for quite a while. And a lot of doctors, like I said, are putting away their Vaseline and the glove to the relief of many, many men. Now, should we still do the PSA, you know, the blood test to check for prostate cancer? Uh, yeah. Most doctors are quitting that, too, because it doesn't really tell you uh, much at, unless it goes up really quickly and you get a biopsy, which I recommend. So... There are mixed feelings right now about the PSA, and you can read all about it on my blog. Uh, but yeah. highly recommend the PSA. But for another reason, because if you find out that your PSA is going up, then that will motivate you to eat your veggies, uh, get rid of toxic substances like alcohol, tobacco, uh, begin to supplement certain things, and avoid the reason why there's so much prostate cancer and breast cancer which is chemicals in the environment that overstimulate the prostate and the breasts. And this is for women too, of course. And they're called xenoestrogens. The big three offenders are heavy metals, pesticides, and plastics. And so try to avoid those, those products. Uh, eat real well, maximize liver and gut function so that you can detoxify them better once you come in contact with these chemicals and so do check the PSA I say but don't get the finger if you <laughs> check the PSA then we will be motivated you will be motivated to do certain things to bring it down naturally and that's well, my thing today well I want to play a little promo for you about a, a kind of really good product that they can find I believe on your website uh, we'll play um, C3 here if you're not fond of books, you may be interested in watching Dr. Rodier's slide presentation on his website, hugorodier.com. That's H-U-G-O-R-O-D-I-E-R.com. 
It lasts 48 minutes and explains the simple roots of all diseases with pictures and graphs that are easy to understand. The presentation includes basic principles of physics, philosophy, anthropology, and history to truly integrate the most vital pillars of human health. Thanks for joining Dr. Rodier and I on Inalienable and Free, Voice of the Coalition. As we go about developing our new organization, the Coalition for Planetary Empowerment, we hope you will consider the importance of taking part in the electoral processes of your government and asserting the rights you have to vote for the companies you respect and love by casting your ballot as a shareholder or as a consumer with what you buy. We hope soon to make this possible through a social network responsive to your needs through dialogue about your rights as a citizen, but also to be able to effectively act in concert with like-minded colleagues to find representatives of government and business executives We'll hear your voice and appreciate your message. See you soon.